Last week on Instagram, I shared several photos from back in 2015 and 2016 when I was training and competing in the sport of CrossFit. At the time, I was regarded as one of the best athletes in the sport. I had appeared at the CrossFit Games, also known as the World Championships of CrossFit, six times, and I had placed as high as 12th in 2016. Once my Throwback Thursday photos were up, the flood of comments and questions came in through my DMs. Those questions were as follows. Did you lose muscle mass since then? How much muscle mass have you lost? What was the difference in your diet then and now? Do you miss being that big? Do you miss being that strong? Today I hope to shed some light on what I've learned from then until now and provide you with some of the answers to these questions. Now, before we get going, I gotta provide you with a little bit of background. First off, I started lifting weights at age 13. And you can see in some of the photos of me at 16 years old and even 21 years old that I had a somewhat athletic physique. I had already been working hard in sports and in the weight room, but definitely hadn't made a concerted effort to dial in my nutrition until I was closer to 20 years old. That was when I got my first visible six pack, which you can see in the comparison between 16 years old and 21. The main difference there was not effort in training or commitment to lifting weights. It was, I had a little bit of a clue about what to put in my body so that I wouldn't carry extra body fat. So from that point forward in my life, I was aware and conscious of my physique. I knew that food played a role in how I looked and I would do my best to keep a balance between food and training from that point forward. Always in an effort to keep my aesthetic appearance, even if it was just for myself, in check. Now, around the age of 24, I found the sport of CrossFit, and I started a seven-year journey competing in various events in the sport. CrossFit did not reward aesthetics, only performance. So I transformed my habits around food to support optimal performance over optimal aesthetics. Thankfully, I had a great foundation for my physique already, and I never fully abandoned some of my beliefs around food consumption and aesthetics. And as a result, I think I kept a better physique than many of my competitors during those years. It should also be said that these long-held nutrition beliefs I had about physique did not help my performance and in some instances probably detracted from my ability to perform. Some of the physique nutrition fundamentals that I kept in my head were always, you gotta keep calories a bit lower, you gotta be in maintenance or in a deficit, you gotta keep your carbs in check, you don't wanna be crushing endless amounts of sugars, you're gonna try and avoid processed foods and high calorie dense foods as often as you can. It was those principles that probably limited my ability to develop super top end strength and be one of the stronger athletes in the sport. It kept me from putting on body fat, which was fine for aesthetics, but that may have enhanced my hormone profile with a little bit more body fat that I would carry. It also likely hindered my ability to recover better from training by having a lower body fat. Now for the final one to two years that I trained for the sport of CrossFit, I was able to shed some of those long held beliefs about nutrition that were more geared towards aesthetics and really start to adopt a mentality of eating to perform. What this included was eating much more than I ever did before. I adopted a very high carb eating approach. I ate more processed food than I ever had before that in order to increase my caloric intake around training. And it all helped fuel better performances. Additionally, that way of eating helped fuel more training volume and a true professional sport approach to both training and nutrition combined. So those performance nutrition fundamentals that applied to the sport of CrossFit were eat much higher carbohydrate, eat a ton of calories, even if it meant going over maintenance or maintaining a leaner physique. And then prioritize caloric intake over food quality at times, even if it meant eating processed foods like cookies and ice cream. 
Now, since then, a lot has changed to support the goals I have of being a good athlete, a great father and husband, and a successful business owner. I don't train for points anymore, only to challenge myself and stay connected to fitness, something that I love and makes me feel great. I've changed my diet as compared to the final year of competing too. So let's get to some of those questions. Why did you lose muscle mass, Marcus? You can see visibly that my muscle mass has decreased since 2016. At the CrossFit Games, I weighed about 195 pounds. There are some photographs where I probably am at 200 pounds just due to fluid consumption and inflammation over the course of the weekend. And I was definitely in the sub 10% or 10% body fat range at that time. Since then, my weight has come down and it's closer to 182 pounds consistently these days. And my body fat has also dropped a bit down closer to 7% and below. Along the way, there's been about six to nine pounds of muscle that has come off my body. I think the single biggest reason for this comes down to the intent of my training. Building muscle mass and holding onto it is very hard. Anyone that has tried to put on muscle knows this. It takes a ton of energy for the body to make muscle and without a significant stimulus, it just won't do it anymore. To have the amount of muscle I have now requires a big stim stimulus. I still train hard and put myself under a lot of tension, but when I compare that to my CrossFit sport years, the training intensity now is just not comparable. It is much lower. See, when I was trying to be the fittest, strongest, fastest, most skilled athlete I could be, I would push myself every day very hard. I lifted heavy weights all the time and I did it under fatigue quite often. The goal was to push those weights heavier and heavier. And as a result of that pursuit, I was putting on muscle mass and retaining a higher amount of muscle mass. Now, I don't chase those performance goals. And when I get into training, I may opt for a lighter weight, a lighter barbell, kettlebell, dumbbell, and I'm totally good with that. The result is that my body just doesn't care to hold on to as much muscle. It just isn't necessary when I'm not lifting as heavy or I don't have the intent of pushing that further. Furthermore, I also train for hours and hours back in 2016 on average per week. I had added training volume and that added training volume along with more food, which I'll talk about more soon, added to my muscle mass during that time. What I'm showing you right now is just a three day stretch of my training logs that included eight sessions, all of them being 45 to 120 minutes of total time investment in each session physically. And that doesn't include warm-ups, cool down, stretching, mental preparation time. So this is what it looked like back in 2016. It was a massive investment of bodily energy. So we can compare what is the total amount of time that things took in the gym back then versus now. The physical training time back then was significant, but the total time investment in the gym was even greater. In order to put those hours of training at such a high performance level in, I needed to do a lot of additional prep, a lot of cool down, a lot of mobility, and a lot of mental preparation inside the gym. Getting psyched up to go hit 95% of your snatch one rep max takes time, it takes energy, it takes commitment. And that all added up to mean about four hours, give or take, in the gym per day dedicated to my fitness. Nowadays, I need to cut that time back a lot. I have other important commitments in my life that I want to tend to, so my actual training time is really limited to 90 minutes a day. I'll do some cardio, I'll then train, <clears throat> maybe 30 minutes of cardio, 60 minutes of training, now, there's other time dedicated to filming content and doing demos in the gym, but my focus training is never more than two hours in a day. That's half of what it used to be when I was training at peak times of the season for CrossFit as a sport. I've cut out all the extra stuff, and I've also been choosing loads and intensity levels that I can get into really quickly without the need for additional warm-up sessions and cool-downs. My 90 minutes a day now includes my warm up, my prep, my cool down, my lifting, 
all the components of what I'm bringing into my fitness training today. So what does being a competitive athlete take from a lifestyle perspective? What does it take to really push your physique and body composition that much further? It takes more than just time. It takes having the intent to come into the gym just about every day and push your limits. You are constantly looking for areas each day to get uncomfortable and touch that limit. It's with that relentless push that you will also come up against pain, injury, exhaustion, burnout, and other obstacles that you just push through. Other parts of your life are gonna take a back seat to the main focus. It's a choice. It's a choice I'm glad I made for all those years that I did. But it's also a choice I'm happy to be having moved away from in order to pursue other things in my life. So if my muscle mass has decreased as a result of that choice, I'm good with it. Do you miss being that big and that strong? At 31 years old, when I retired from competing in CrossFit, I knew I still had a long fitness life ahead of me. I think leaving a sport is hard for athletes to come to terms with. It's a lifestyle that they've known for most of their lives, and it's hard to imagine life without it. What will it feel like to not be the best at something that you do anymore? The simple answer to the question above is yes. I do miss being able to snatch 280 pounds. I miss being able to clean and jerk 360 pounds. I miss being able to deadlift close to 600 pounds. If I could snap my fingers and have it all back and even add some more weight to it, I absolutely would. But the reality is that you don't get those big numbers without the other factors that go into it. The training, the diet, the mental focus, the all-consuming nature of sport, the injuries, the burnout, the exhaustion. So those parts I don't miss anymore. And since those bigger muscles and strength go with it, I'm okay saying goodbye to that portion. But guess what? I didn't just give up and stop training. I still train hard and I find ways to push myself. I love that I can still deadlift over 400 pounds just about any day of the week. I love that I can get under a 315 pound bar and back squat it without too much trouble. And that's still high level strength. It may not be elite, but I also know that I have decades in front of me to keep my strength. And that to me is much more of an enticing challenge. I wanna be the old guy that's still crushing fitness. I do believe that many more people are gonna talk about how I'm the guy that in his 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond was strong and fit. Then there were people who are gonna talk about, in 2016, that guy was the 12th fittest CrossFit Games person. They will say, damn, that old guy's jacked. And to be that old guy and be that jacked, I don't need to max out my lifts weekly anymore. I need to stay in the game a long time. Okay, now it's about nutrition. What did your nutrition look like then versus now, Marcus? Well, when I was competing in CrossFit, the main difference in my diet was the number of calories I was consuming and also the macronutrient split that I followed. Back then, I had a much higher demand for calories than I do now. When I was near the peak of a season in training volume and intensity, I would guess that my caloric intake was somewhere between 5,000 to 5,500 calories a day. And back then, I was getting about 40 to 50% of my total calories from carbohydrates alone. And that was coming in the form of simple sugars, starchy carbohydrates, and some fruit and veggies. Nowadays, I eat somewhere closer to 4,000 calories a day, uh, give or take a little bit, and I get the bulk of my calories from fat. And I limit my carbohydrates mainly to fruits, veggies, and some starches here and there. I don't consume all the shakes, and sugars that I used to back in my competitive days. I've also tracked my calories and macros much closer in recent years and I have a much better idea of my nutritional needs from week to week. Back in 2016, I would focus more on just eating a lot to recover, generally, without a specific focus on measuring. It wasn't uncommon for me to stop at the store on the way home from a tough day of training and go buy an entire carton of cooked white rice and a pint of ice cream and then eat the whole thing when I got home that night just to help me recover. 
Nowadays, those types of things would make me feel horrible. I would sleep like crap. And it's not appealing to me because of the negative impacts it would have on my body since I'm not trying to chase maximum performance. Carbohydrates fueled my performance back then and likely made putting on more muscle easier for me. But mainly the purpose of carbs was fuel training and support recovery. And now I use fat to get most of my calories and I limit my carbs so that I can maintain better focus mentally and have stable energy throughout the day without having these giant swings in my energy as a result of large glucose spikes in my blood. So in conclusion, if you wanna get bigger, it is going to take doing things that you've never done before. Building a lot of lean muscle means pushing yourself way outside of your comfort zone, both physically and nutritionally. For me, that all came with CrossFit competition in the sport. It was a natural progression. And keep in mind that I wasn't even that big. I wasn't even 200 pounds back then. As soon as the competition stopped and I wasn't pushing myself in that way, the stimulus changed and my body knew it. It knew it didn't need that much muscle anymore. The result was less muscle, but also a huge shift in where I could place my energy and my priorities. Each day is no longer 100% focused on fitness. I don't go to bed and wake up thinking about my workouts anymore. I don't need 30 to 45 minutes to get warmed up to train. I don't need to make my food my job. And I don't get anxious about the workouts and the coming week of training like I used to. And those trade-offs, they mean eight pounds less muscle for me over the course of five years. The message here, you can build a great body and great fitness levels by doing things in a much more sustainable way. But if you ever ask yourself, how am I gonna get the next five to 10 pounds of muscle? Then you better be ready to push yourself in a new way and get uncomfortable. My look good, move well philosophy that I hold now with functional bodybuilding is how I intend to get to 60 years old and be proud of my fitness and my muscle mass. If you enjoyed this episode, please give me a like below. Shoot me a comment. What would you like to hear from me? What would you like to see next on the channel? Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.